ambassador of China. So he will always state the Chinese position. Uh, again, kung siguro ako personally ang pinag-usapan, maybe I'll be upset. But you're not talking about me, we're talking about the Philippines. So it doesn't serve any purpose for us to lose our temper or to overreact. Ang pangulo po natin na si PBBM, nakabalit po kagabi. At napakaganda po ng kanyang balita para po sa Pilipinas. Sapagkat panibagong hanap buhay, job opportunities nga po sa ating mga kababayang Pilipino. Ilan po sa mga... mga napakagandang pangyayari sa katatapos lamang po na 50th commemorative summit na yan sa Japan ay ang investment pledge na 14 billion pesos na kapag translate po ito sa trabaho ay libo-libong hanap buhay po ito para po sa ating mga kababayang Pilipino. Unahin po natin ang pinakalatest post ng Presidential Communications Office sa kanilang Facebook page. Ayon po dito, balik Pilipinas na si Pangulong Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. mula sa ika-50 na ASEAN Japan Commemorative Summit. Sa kanyang arrival speech, inihayag ni PBBM ang mga hakbang ng Pilipinas para sa malinis na enerhiya at inanyayahan ang mga miyembro ng ASEA, Asia Zero Emission Community na mamuhunan sa renewable energy ng bansa. nag rin ng dagdag investment pledges ang Pangulo at kanyang delegasyon mula sa meeting kasama ang Japanese business community. Diba? Diyan po natin nakikita mga tol kung gaano po kahusay si Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. At totoo po yung kanyang sinasabi noon pa man, patulad po ng titulo natin sa live streaming natin na ito, that the best performance is politics. At ito po yung pinapatunayan sa atin ngayon ni Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Ang kanyang mga ginagawa po sa kasalukuyan ay nagpapakita lamang ng tama po ang kanyang pamumulitika. Kasi sa mga nakalipas na panahon, lagi po nating nakikita at uh, nakoconclude na ang mga individual Kapag ka namumulitika ang mga politiko ay talagang paninira, pagtira sa kalaban at kung ano-ano pang mga kaparaanan, pamimili ng boto. Lahat po yan hindi po natin nakikita sa ating mahal na Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Bakit? Kasi siya po ay isang magaling na Pangulo. Siya po ay isang merong tunay na malasakit para po sa bansa at sa sambayan ng Pilipino. Kaya ang ginagawa niya ngayon, hindi po yung tradisyonal na pamumulitika. Kung hindi ang pagtatrabaho sa ating bansa bilang Pangulo at pagtitimon ng barko sa tamang direksyon nito na sa ngayon nakikita na po natin ang epekto para po sa ating bansa at sa ating mga kababayang Pilipino. Ang ating ekonomiya patuloy pong gumaganda. Ang ating mga kababayang Pilipino, patuloy pong dumadami ang hanap buhay para sa kanila. O ngayon, balikan po natin ang arrival statement ni Pangulong Bongbong Marcos kagabi. Panoorin po natin ito mga tol at saka mamaya panoorin din po natin yung kapihan with media. Yun po ay nangyari sa Japan. Ito naman po ang statement ni Pangulong Bongbong Marcos ay ginawa niya po ito bago po sila lumipad pabalik dito po sa Pilipinas. fellow workers in government and our friends of the press. I am about to leave uh, from Tokyo, Japan, where I attended the commemorative summit for the 50th anniversary of ASEAN-Japan relations and met with ASEAN leaders and Prime Minister Kishida Fumio. Throughout the summit and other related events, we discussed the future of ASEAN-Japan relations and emphasized the need for ASEAN to have an active role in maintaining peace, security, and stability in the region. We also advocated a rules-based Indo-Pacific region that is free and open, guided by the shared fundamental principles as enshrined in the UN Charter and the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia. We highlighted the need to promote respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, 
settlement of differences or disputes by peaceful means, and renunciation of the threat or use of force. I called attention to the worsening plight of the people of Myanmar and urged the proactive engagement of all stakeholders so as to alleviate the situation through the five-point consensus, the United Nations mechanisms, as well as the AHA Center. The summit highlighted Japan's commitment to promoting friendship and camaraderie amongst the peoples of ASEAN and Japan through various initiatives, including the Japan East Asia Network of Exchange for Students and Youth, or Genesis Program. This has been supported by the Philippines since 2007. Japan's people-to-people -people programs create not only long-term relationships, but also build trust, which is the basis of ASEAN-Japan cooperation across all sectors. We also discussed how Japan's role in ASEAN and individual states' as economies have progressed over the past five decades, particularly in our shared commitment towards peace and security, trade and investment, food security, climate action, energy security, supply chain resilience, infrastructure development, and connectivity. As permanent country coordinator for ASEAN-Japan economic relations, I assured ASEAN and Japan that the Philippines will continue to shepherd ASEAN initiatives and projects, not only to co-create a region of economic prosperity, but also an inclusive society that is ready for the future. I also delivered the keynote speech during the Creative and Sustainable Economy Through Innovation event organized by our DTI, and this showcased collaborative projects of Filipino fashion designers and Japanese textile manufacturers. In the area of investments, I am pleased to update you on the progress of business commitments signed by our valued Japanese partners during my last visit to Japan in February. Japanese investors directly reported over 169.7 billion pesos of capital funneled into the Philippine economy. From these commitments, more than 9,700 new jobs have been generated to date. Nine new letters of intent and MOUs were signed during this visit, valued at 14.5 billion pesos in investments and over 15,750 additional jobs for our workers. I'm also pleased to update that the letters of intent and MOU signed in February 2023, together with those signed during this visit, total now 771.6 billion pesos or approximately $14 billion in pledges from Japanese investors. This significant investment is anticipated to create around 40,200 jobs, marking a positive and promising development for our collaborative efforts. We also concluded two memoranda of cooperation, one between the DNR and the Ministry of the Environment of Japan in the field of environmental protection, and the other between the Coast Guards of the Philippines and of Japan. The conclusion of this MOC between Coast Guards strengthens an already excellent relationship. On this last day, I attended the Asia Zero Emissions Community, or ASEC, Leaders Meeting, where I apprised ASEC partner countries of the current Philippine initiatives towards promoting clean energy transition. I highlighted our experience in promoting clean energy projects such as the first wind farms in Southeast Asia in 2003 during my term as Governor of Ilocos Norte, and I invited ASEC partners, including Japan, to invest in the Philippine renewable energy industry to achieve not only the intention of the ASEC, but also the overall goal of the Paris Agreement. My administration will see to it that our constructive engagements with ASEAN, our external partners, our stakeholders, will continue to best serve our national interests in as much as we promote the regional interest of peace and prosperity for the well-being of our people. Without a doubt, this summit reaffirmed the robust and enduring character of ASEAN-Japan relations. Maraming salamat po. Yan, napanood po natin yung summary ah, ng uh, ang tagumpay ng ating uh, Pangulong Bongbong Marcos diyan po sa pagdalo sa 50th commemorative summit na yan sa Japan. Pero balikan po natin in particular Ito pong post ng ating mahal na Pangulo sa kanyang Facebook page 
Nakalagay po dito ang mga datos na dapat ipakalat po natin sa publiko sa kasalukuyan. Sapagkat ito po talaga ang magpapatunay na hindi po nasasayang ang pagpunta po ng ating Pangulo sa iba't ibang bansa particular dito po sa Japan. Basahin po natin ang nakalagay po dito sa post ng kanyang FB page. Last February, we reported that we secured more than 700 billion pesos in investment. Binahagi po ito kanina lamang sa video na pinanood natin ni Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Sinuulit lamang po natin. Ha? And 24,000 job opportunities during our visit to Japan. I am pleased to say that out of those pledges, 169.7 billion pesos has already been spent creating 9,700 jobs for Filipinos from Japanese investors as of December. Today, we received an additional 14.5 billion pesos worth of pledges bringing our total investments from Japan this year to 771.6 billion pesos which is expected to generate approximately 40,200 jobs. Yung mga figures na pinag-uusapan po natin and I hope makita po ito ng mga kapwa natin Pilipino particular yung mga nagkaroon ng trabaho na ito po ay dahil po sa pagbisita ng ating Pangulo sa iba't ibang panig po ng bansa, particular dyan po sa Japan. Hindi po nasasayang gumastos man tayo ng medyo malaki. Ang balik naman po nito para po sa Pilipinas ay napakalaki. Magandang ekonomiya at trabaho para po sa mga kapwa natin Pilipino. Kasama din po sa mga highlights ng pagpunta ng ating Pangulo dyan po sa commemorative summit, ay ang mga sumusunod. Basahin po natin ang post naman 11 hours ago ng Presidential Communications Office. Sabi po dito, isinulong ni Pangulong Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. ang mga interes ng bansa sa ikalimampu na ASEAN Japan Friendship and Cooperation Commemorative Summit noong December 17. Sa Creative and Sustainable Economy through Innovation event ng DTI, inihayag ni PBBM ang layuning palakasin ang kolaborasyon ng Pilipino at Japanese artist na kasama naman ni PBBM sa bilateral meeting si Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida at sa isang meeting sa sidelines ng nasabing summit si Vietnamese Prime Minister Pam Min Sin. Narito ang highlights ng ikalawang araw ng opisyal na pagbisita ng Pangulo sa Japan. Basahin po natin. Session 1, meron pong plenary session na nangyari at ito po ay about sa review of ASEAN-Japan relations, partners for peace and stability. Sa session 2 naman, ang tema ay heart-to-heart -heart partners across generations. Para naman po sa session 3, yung team ay partners for co-creation of economy and society of the future, creative and sustainable economy through innovation, At syempre yung bilateral meeting na binanggit po kanina sa Prime Minister po ng Japan at sa kapo ng, ng uh, Vietnam. At wag din po natin kalimutan, by the way, na para siguraduhin po ang mga katuparan sa mga investment pledges po na ito na nakuha po ng ating Pangulo dyan po sa Japan at sa iba't iba pang mga bansa na kanya pong opisyal na pinuntahan, ay itinalaga po ng ating mahal na Pangulo bilang, bilang uh, pinuno ng bagong tatag sa pamamagitan po ng isang Executive Order number no. 49. Ito pong si Frederick G. Go. Ano? O Ginoong Frederick Go. Nagkamali po ako ng pagbasa. Itinalaga si Ginoong Frederick Go bilang kalihim ng Office of the Spe Special Assistant to the President for Investment and Economic Affairs kasunod ng pagkakatatag ng tanggapan sa pamamagitan ng Executive Order Number no. 49. Basahin po natin ang mga informasyon tungkol po sa pagkatao at karir nito pong si Secretary Frederick D. Go. 
siya po ang kauna-unahang pinuno ng Special Assistant to the President for Investment and Economic Affairs. Ito pong si Secretary Go ay naging chairperson ng RL Commercial Rate Incorporated mula po 2021, syempre hanggang sa kasalukuyan, bago po niya binitawan na yan, dahil nga po siya po ay taong gobyerno na, tapos naging vice chairman at chairman po ng Luzon International Premier Airport Development Corporations at iba pang mga detalye. Puntahan nyo na lamang po yung uh, Facebook post ng ating Presidential Communications Office para po sa kabuuan ng kanyang mga uh, career highlights, education, saka recognition and awards. Ngayon, dumako po tayo dito po sa pakikipag-usap ng ating mahal na Pangulong Bongbong Marcos sa mga media personnel diyan po sa Japan. Bagamat ito po ay napanood na natin ilan sa mga napag-usapan dito sa balita, E muli po natin balik tanawan sa pamamagitan po ng pakikinig mismo sa ating mahal na Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Um, so we're coming to the end of this uh, uh, trip which was uh, presumably which was uh, uh, officially about the uh, uh, the cooperation between Japan and ASEAN. It's commemor we are co we commemorated the 50th year of uh, that relationship and um, I, uh, I many many subjects were spoken about uh, but it uh, is very very clear that Japan has a, um, a clear plan uh, to be more involved uh, in terms of the development of the economy of ASEAN uh, of the Indo-Pacific region and certainly for, uh, for the Philippines and uh, Yes, uh, the, I, I have to say that uh, our relationship with uh, Japan has grown from strength to strength, whereas before, generally speaking, our, our uh, discussions were centered around uh, trade um, and ODA and JICA and JBIC and ADB. Uh, now we have entered into other uh, but mostly for infrastructure. Now we have entered into agreements that concern uh, other areas. Uh, one of them, of course, is uh, security, as uh, Japan has the same concerns in China, in the China Sea. We are in South China Sea. Sila naman nasa North China Sea. And uh, so we have uh, some very, very similar issues. And uh, the assistance that they are providing us, the partnership that they are providing us, will have a synergy uh, to um, increase our capabilities in terms of defending the peace uh, in, the, ch in, ch in uh, the China Sea. So uh, that, has, that, has, uh, uh, that has taken uh, a very large part, that has now begun to occupy a very large part of the discussions between uh, Japan and uh, the Philippines. I just came now from uh, another uh, meeting with uh, Japanese uh, corporations, uh, private sector partners, some who are already in the Philippines, some who are uh, still thinking about going, coming into the Philippines, although most of them really have, have an involvement already. As uh, kagaya na sinasabi ko sa inyo, hindi mo masyadong believe yung basta pirman ng pirman ng MOU. So pinag-report namin sila kung ano na ba nangyari doon sa mga pinirmahan natin noong nakaraang Enero. Uh, so th those are the, uh, those are the uh, main elements of that. And I, I, I have to, I, I'm happy to be able to say, maganda naman ang takbo. At uh, kung ano yung mga kanilang pinaplano, uh, the Japanese generally are very efficient. So they are able to, they are able to uh, uh, really stay within schedule in terms of their expenditures, in terms of their investment, in terms of their uh, infrastructure development. Um, from here, I will be going to visit His Majesty the Emperor and the Empress, their Majesties, the Emperor and the em Empress, and that will uh, again uh, give uh, uh, strength to our uh, relationship between uh, Japan and the Philippines as uh, uh, they have been kind enough, the, the, their Majesties have been kind enough to uh, 
to invite us to uh, once again visit with them. Uh, I don't know if you, you uh, know it, but the Philip Romaldes, um, like their speaker's uh, brother, was very good friends with the, uh, with the emperor. Uh, and they were together in Oxford, uh, together. Oh, who? Who's the big guy? Ah, yeah. Yeah, the anak ni Chief Justice si Toto Fernandez. He was also, wala na si Toto. But they were very good friends. And uh, the last time that we um, we met, he was asking if he can get halo-halo. Kasi napakain daw ni Philip doon sa, sa Philippine Embassy doon sa London. So, <laughs> I guess we will revisit some of that. All right, uh, let yes, me sir. open the floor. Yes, sir. Uh, first question from Ms. Joyce Balancho of ABS-CBN. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sir, um, the decision of the two leaders to hasten the uh, conclusion of the negotiations for the RAA, does it have something to do with the recent incidents over the West Philippines? No, Europe? it's been in the works for, for way before that. Um, uh, of course, we, it, the, the incidents in the past few couple of months um, have certainly sharpened our focus when it comes to that. Uh, but again, that's one of the things that I am looking forward to. That will be a big multi that will have a big multiplier effect to uh, our capabilities. The, this, this is, these are the kind of arrangements we are making, not only with Japan, uh, but also with other countries around uh, China Sea, in the Pacific, you know, in the Pacific uh, region, and it has become a very important part of these trips that we take that kahit uh, na it is a it is a uh, plenary session ang pinag-uusapan is climate change eh kayo kung lapitan kung sino man and said baka pwede natin pag-usapan tungkol dito sa security uh, issues uh, sa South China Sea and that's this is one of the products of that uh, we also have the same kind of um, negotiations or discussions with many other countries. So uh, we'll uh, continue to do that uh, para marami, maraming tumutulong sa atin sa problema ang hinaharap natin sa South China Sea. Sir, just to follow up, have we set a specific timeline on the finalization of the RAE? For, I think both the Prime Minister and I agree, ASAP, lahat <laughs> ito is uh, as soon as possible. Yesterday, if not sooner. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Catherine Valiente of the Manila Times. Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon. Good sir, afternoon. may we get your comment on the reported presence of an extraordinary number of 11 Chinese vessels in Ayungi Shoal? And meron din na pong 27 other ships surrounding the shoal. Yeah. Is there a commitment from uh, Japanese uh, Prime Minister Kishida to help us in this uh, kind of swarming incidents in our territory? Uh, well, we, of course, we are exerting all efforts, no? but uh, so the, we, have, this is a, uh, we have to be very careful that uh, we do not uh, overreact, um, that we do not, uh, uh, that, that we do not make mistakes that might be misinterpreted by anyone. Kailangan talaga maingat tayo dahil pag May nangyari ulit dyan, if we, accept, if we heighten the tensions, uh, it won't lead us to, uh, to a good, so, good result. So uh, we, are being, we are being very circumspect in uh, the actions that we will take. Thank you, sir. Uh, Alan Francisco, PTB4. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Yeah. With the investments that we received from Japanese companies, um, how would you describe your visit here in Japan, sir, and how many business deals that we got? Well, I think the number that was given to us today, for today, just for, the, just for those uh, pledges, pledge pa lang ito, ah, but at least meron na tayong, may opening na tayo. We, it was uh, U.S. Yeah. Uh, sorry, nine companies, but to the value of uh, 14, 14 billion. Yeah. Hmm? Sorry? Yes, pesos. pesos. But the, uh, the, some of these are extensions of already existing contracts. Uh, Mag-expand lang sila ng operation nila. 
But the more important part is 200 plus thousand uh, uh, new jobs. That that's also uh, an enormous part of the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sec next. Thank you. Uh, there are two parts today. The signing of new MOUs, that's nine new MOUs with a total value of 14 billion pesos. But more importantly, about uh, 20 plus companies gave updates to the president today mm. Mm. of their pledges from the trip last February. And on that part, uh, mm. we don't have the exact number today, but 169 billion pesos yeah. of actualized investments from the trip earlier this year. Yes. Oh, various. Oh, you name semiconductors, it. You name uh, it. Uh, semiconductors, healthcare, of course, infrastructure. Very on presence in Japanese infrastructure development is very, uh, very high profile. Um, but now the security, uh, agri. Ano pa bang napag-usapan natin? Um, oh, yeah, filters, yes. Yeah, but yeah, many, of these, many of these projects that they're, that, uh, the investments that they're bringing in are not only for the Philippine market, they are also for foreign markets. So that will also improve our, uh, our uh, external balance of payments. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Alexis Romero, Philippine Star. Uh, magandang hapon, Mr. President. Uh, given the re <coughs> sorry, given the recent reports about the supposedly disrespectful behavior of the Chinese ambassador, si Ambassador Wang, including his reported bullying of no less than the AFP chief, are you still comfortable with the envoy? And will the Philippine government ask China to recall the ambassador? Well, uh, he's he's the, he's the ambassador of China. So he will always state the Chinese position. Uh, again, kung siguro ako personally ang pinag-usapan, maybe I'll be upset. But you're not talking about me, we're talking about the Philippines. So it doesn't serve any purpose for us to lose our temper or to overreact. Uh, so kung yan ang gustong ibigay sa atin na... Dito ko lalong hinangaan si Pangulong Bongbong Marcos, mga tol sa naging kasagutan na yan sa katanungan ng reporter kasi most of us talagang overly reacting dito po sa mga ginawa ng Chinese ambassador pero napaka-professional ng ating Pangulong Bongbong Marco sabi niya nga kung personal siya uh, really upset siya pero it's not about me it's about the Philippines O, kaya hindi talaga tayo nagkamali sa ating Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Hindi lamang po iniisip yung, uh, yung kapakanan ng iilang mga Pilipino kung hindi ang kabuuan ng, uh, ng welfare ng bawat Pilipino, pati in particular, syempre ng Pilipinas. Tama naman yung punto niya. Kahit sino naman siguro ang lumagay sa posisyon ng Chinese ambassador na yan, eh yung interest po ng bansa nila ang isusulong nila. Pero siyempre, nire-respeto pa rin natin ang naging pahayag particular dito pong si Senator JB Ejercito kasi nanawagan si Senator JB Ejercito at saka ito pong si Senate President Mick Subiri na pabalikin na po sa China ang ambasador po nila rito sa Pilipinas. Yan ay dahil sa nakikita ng dalawa na hindi po nakakatulong ito pong si Wang Silian para po pababain yung tension diyan sa West Philippine Sea. Ngunit, ito ang pinakamahalaga, yung naging kasagutan ni Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Patuloy po natin pakinggan, panoorin si PBBM. Ambassador ng China, eh, wala naman sa, hindi naman sa atin. I mean, kung talagang objectionable siya, you can make it known to, to Beijing. But, uh, I, I don't, I think Ambassador Wang is just doing his job. He's just doing his job. He's continuing to state the, the Chinese narrative. Of course, we don't agree with that narrative. But I cannot see him doing anything else. And so we just keep trying. We'll just keep trying. Um, because the truth of the matter is, kahit palitan, mapalitan na si Ambassador Wang, pareho pa rin ang sasabihin ng susunod na ambasador. Dahil yun ang linya ng China. 
So hindi nila, hindi, hindi nila titigil yan. Uh, so we have to, that's why we have to work around it. We, we cannot, uh, we, we cannot, we cannot overreact. Kung may sasabi, yung, yung mga ibang nga napipikon, sabi, well, hindi, hindi naman tungkol sa atin to, tungkol sa Pilipinas ito. Eh kung magkamali tayo, hindi malaking gulo. So we don't want to go anywhere near that situation. Pero follow up lang, Mr. President. But would would, <coughs> sorry. would you have wanted would you have wanted that the manner of asserting China's peace position be a little bit different? Kasi marami nagre-reklamo dun sa kanyang way well, of yes, doing his of job. Of course. I wish that we had talked about it over the table as opposed to colliding with each other on uh, uh, each other's ships uh, in the open sea. So, uh, of course, uh, I would have preferred a less uh, confrontational method of... Uh, of trying to decide these things, so, but it is what it is. Salamat po. Yeah. Sir, other issue? May Ann Los Baños of TV5 mm -hmm. on the budget. Hi, sir. Good afternoon po. Sir, on the 2024 national budget, which has been ratified by the House of Representatives and the Senate, sir, um, what do you think about it? Any comments on the deletion of the confidential funds, which will affect both OVP and DepEd, both headed by VP Sara, sir? Uh, well, that was actually the initiative of uh, the Vice President. Uh, in turn, I'm, when I'm talking about the, conf the confidential funds and to, uh, to not insist that they, uh, uh, that they have such a confidential fund. Um, so I, I, I think as far as I'm concerned, it is, uh, it is um, a settled issue. Uh, the the, the budget, I think, uh, is very, very closely, uh, very closely follows what our original NEP was. Uh, so, I'm, although if we, what we have to do now is that there is still a, a there is still a, uh, a gap, a differential between the appropriated funds and the uh, funds that we have collected thus far. So there's a certain amount that we now have extra that we now have to collect. But I'm confident in that because we're changing the system in customs. We're changing. Well, the the BIR has been very has been very efficient at uh, making the collections. But we are still uh, providing uh, 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 new uh, initiatives to make business easier and also to increase our collection. Uh, in fact, this in, during the signing of the LOI, nandun si uh, Commissioner Jun Dumagi. And while they were signing the LOI, sabi niya, kinakalkula ko na yung koleksyon ko. So, sabi ko, maaabot mo ba yung kulang natin? Sabi niya, siguro naman. So, I'm fairly comfortable with the way the budget has turned out. We just have to do a little work over the year to make sure that we cover the differential between uh, the actual the appropriated funds and the unappropriated and the unappropriate funds. Uh, that have been appropriated by Congress, by yeah, by the House Sorry. and Com the Senate. Co compound question, po, sir. Uh, will you be signing it on Wednesday? And how will the 2024 national budget be responsive to the WPS challenges, po? The the, the? W How will ah, it be responsive well, to the West Philippine Sea challenges? <laughs> uh, well, again, it is difficult for me. Okay. Uh, to talk about operational capabilities and things like that. But we will improve that. We will improve our operational capabilities uh, in, in uh, every, every way that we can. And, but that's not the only side to that story. Uh, there, there, uh, it, you, even if we go up to the desired level of spending on defense, up to 2% of GDP, we will still be uh, very not, compar not comparative in terms of actual military force to the Chinese. I think that's, uh, that's obvious to everyone. So that's not the only side to the problem. Uh, we have to, again, continue, as I mentioned before, continue to ally ourselves with as many countries around the world, especially in Asia, but in, in the Indo-Pacific area, but around the world. And uh, the key to um, the key to being able to speak with a unified voice is uh, essential, and that will only come with uh, strong coalitions between uh, different countries, within, amongst different countries. 
Mm. Masasign po sa Wednesday. Huh? Masasign na po ang budget sa Wednesday, sir. You, will yes, you I think it? we're scheduled for Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Last question. Bethina Yonite of Manila Bulletin. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, how would you assess your performance this year, sir? And what are your goals and outlook for 2024? Thank you, Paul. Well, I think this year, we're, this uh, 2023 was really the year of structural changes. Uh, so the, those structural changes were necessary because uh, we have to remodel or, or readjust rather uh, our, for example, our fiscal policy, even our monetary policy, our spending policy, uh, so that we are slowly moving, or not so slowly, so we're moving away from the uh, COVID economy. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that, that's really what we, we studied the government, we studied the economy, um, and came, uh, started to come to a few answers. Some of, it nice, some, some of it is structural that we have had to do. Uh, but now, those structural changes should start to, fa uh, well, they already have, but they will even have a greater effect in 2024 than they did in 2023. They are just some of the uh, changes that we did to the fiscal, po to the fiscal stru uh, tax structure, some of the changes that we did to the ease of doing business. All of these things are just, start, are just beginning to work now uh, because it's only now that we have put them. We have changed the, the structure of, the, of uh, the different agencies and equally importantly, that we are beginning to find the best people for each of those uh, positions. Sir, your outlook for our goals for 2024, sir. How? Your, your goals are outlook for 2024. Well, it doesn't really change that, uh, that we have, uh, that, that we will continue to modernize. It's obsolete na yung ibang structures natin sa gobyerno that we continue to modernize, we continue to be responsive to the new economy, um, that we position ourselves properly. We're, we're, we're again, we're, we're moving, but if we're moving in the right direction. But if you ask me, I'm always, I always feel it's not, it's too slow, it's too slow, it's too slow. Um, so we will just keep pushing and pushing and pushing para matapos lahat ito so that we can start to feel the effects of those changes that we made. Okay, napanood po natin ang mga pahayag ni Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Napaka-remarkable nung komento niya doon po sa ambasador ng China. Tama naman yon na upset talaga siya sa ginagawa ng ambasador ng China. Pero hindi kasi siya lamang ang pinag-uusapan kung hindi ang Pilipinas at ang bawat Pilipino. Kaya we should be professional pagdating po sa dealings dyan po sa China. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo mga tol.